In the session, you are going to discuss uh, one more example for DFA. So here uh, it is in different one. Like here, the uh, DFA is over the language of alphabet A comma B comma C. Uh, so far, we have taken only the binary elements. Either uh, the input will be A B or zero or one, right? So in this example, we are going to construct a DFA for the language over the alphabet A comma B comma C, and this accepts A B C as a substring. Okay, so when you are constructing an NFA or DFA, what we do? This is the minimum possible input, right? Your regular expression will be like this. So A B C should be exactly the substring concatenated with A plus B plus C, the whole star. So either A or B or C. In the prefix also, you can have A or B or C. So this is the regular expression representation for it. So in the prefix, I can have any number of A B C. Uh, a or B or C, any number of combinations, and similarly in the suffix also I can have anything. But somewhere in the input we should have this A B C occurring uh, sequentially. Okay, so that is what your language representation. Now, when you want to construct an NFA or DFA, the minimum possible state is the minimum input to the system is it should have at least A B C, right? To process these three elements, we should have four states. Okay, to take input as A, input as B, and input as C to reach this final state. So this will be the final state and this is the starting state. When the input is exactly A followed by B followed by C, we are reaching final state. And after A or B or C, when the sequence of A, B, C is formed, then we can have any combination of A or B or C. Okay, so this is your normal uh, expectation. These are all the minimal requests for it. Okay, so when you want to construct an NFA, we can put a self loop here for A comma B comma C. So in the prefix, I can have A, B, C and in the suffix, I can have A, B, C and any, any looping condition of it. And I exactly need A followed by B followed by C somewhere in the input. Okay, so this is your NFA description. But we cannot use that for DFA too, right? For DFA, uh, this is fine. We have we should have A, B, C, and that can be followed by A or B or C. It is fine. But from each and every state on each and every input symbol, we have to define the transition. So when I, when I take this as one, two, three, and four, these are all the states. If these three, uh, these four are the states. From state 1, when the input is A, we have a transition. So what happens if the input is B or C? We have to define it. And in state 2 on B, we have a transition. So we should know what happens if there is an A or C here. And in state 3, we have a transition on C. So we should define what happens if there is an input B or A occurs here. Okay. So coming to the first part. So state one is the place like where we haven't found A, B, C, any of the element. Okay, so this is the prefix part. So in the prefix, I can have any number of B and C. And if it is exactly followed by A, B, C, then we can accept it. Okay, so in the prefix, I can have any combination of A, B, C. So it is not an issue. So any B, C occurs in the prefix, I can have it in the state one itself. Since state one, we haven't processed any of the input symbol. So we'll be waiting here. And when A, B, C occur in sequence and we can reach final state. Okay, so this is first state. And in second state, so second state is a place where already we have seen an A. Okay, and we are waiting for B, C. So what happened if I have an A here? So any number of A I have here, if it is followed by next B, C, I can accept it, right? The input should be accepted by A, B, C. That is the only constraint. So if I have an A, I can put a self loop here. So for any number of A's, I can stay here. And if the next two inputs are B, C, the input will be accepted. So somewhere in the input, we should have A, B, C occurring in sequence. That is the constraint, okay? So on A, we have a transition. On B, we have a transition. So we have to see what happened for C. So uh, 2 is a place where already we have seen an A and we are waiting for B, C. What happened if you have C here? This is not the input that is needed, right? 
So we should exactly have A, B, C to be followed. So this entirely changed the description. So again, we'll be going back to state one. If you have the input as C, we have to start from first checking for A, B, C in the remaining input. Okay, so you should have a transition back to state one. Okay, so coming to the state three, state three is a place where uh, we have a transition on C already and we have already processed A, B. Now we are waiting for C. Okay, so what happened if a A occurs? If a A occurs, this is not, a, uh, not the thing that is needed, right? So if a A occurs and if next two inputs are B, C, the input has to be accepted, right? So if a A occurs, we have to go to state two and wait for B, C. Then the input will be accepted. Okay, listen carefully. When you are doing it, you should not miss out any of the place. We cannot make the transition back to state one. Okay, if the input is A here, we'll go back here one step and wait for B, C. For any A, if the next two inputs are B, C, it goes to final state. Okay, so what happens if a B occurs? Now, already we have seen A, B. And if you have one more B, so this totally changed the system, right? We should not need this. So in that case, again, we have to start from first to the state one. Okay, to the state one like this, and we'll be waiting for your transitions. And the input is B, we'll go back first and we'll wait for the transition. So we'll take some examples like A, B, B, A, B, B, A. Okay, so starting from state Q0, Q0 when the input, sorry, starting from state one, I'm sorry. Uh, state one is the starting state. One on A, it goes to state two. Now two on B, two on B, it goes to state three. Three on, three on B, three when the input is B, it again goes to state one. So one on A, one on A, it goes to state two. Now two on B, two on B, it goes to state three. Three on C, it goes to state four. And four on A, it, go, it stays in state four itself. So somewhere in the input, if you have ABC occurring in sequence, it reaches the final state. So that is the meaning of it. So you can check some examples and verify the working of your DFA. Okay, thank you.